Welcome guys. In today's session, we'll be discussing about the arterial circle of wheelies, which is also known as the circulus arteriosus. Um, and uh, I'll be a presenter for today. So welcome all. My name is Boris Minieri, and I'm the director. So let's start with this uh, uh, circle of wheelies. So we will start with a, a brief introdu introduction. So where, where do you find this arterial circle of wheels? So it is present in the interpudicular system, okay? In the interpudicular system, that is where you find the arterial circle of wheels. In fact, it is not circular in shape, rather it is polygonal in shape. And that is why, in fact, the French, the French refer this circle of wheels in a more correct term. They refer it to as polygon de wheels, polygon de wheels, because it is polygonal in shape. It is not circular in shape, okay? And it, it extends from the superior border of pons uh, to the to the median longitudinal fissure, okay? It is uh, it is constituted to the structures which are located in the interpudicular uh, system, that is the optic chiasma, the tuber cinerium, the mammillary bodies of the hypothalamus, and the posterior perforated substance, okay? So this arterial sac of weedis, or the circular arteriosus, is an anastomosis. It is simply an anastomosis between the internal carotid artery and the vertebrobacilla uh, system. Okay, so the internal carotid, uh, so the vertebrobacilla system is formed by the uh, bacilla artery, and the bacilla artery was formed by the union of the two vertebral arteries. Okay, so when the two vertebral arteries uh, unite at the lower board of pons, they form the bacilla artery, which lies in the bacilla groove that is within the the cisterna pontis. Then the basilar artery uh, eventually subdivides to give you the posterior cerebral arteries, and these posterior cerebral arteries participate in this uh, uh, arterial circle of wheelies. So let us look at how, how is it formed. So it is formed by the following. The anterior communicating artery uh, forms the anterior part, and the anterior communicating artery, as the, as the name suggests, it connects the right and the left uh, anterior cerebral arteries. Uh, we also have the anterior cerebral artery, which is a terminal branch from the uh, uh, the internal carotid artery, and it is it forms the anterolateral part of the uh, the uh, the circle of wheels. Then on the lateral part, we have the termination of the internal carotid artery, and uh, so the internal carotid artery shall terminate into the anterior cerebral artery and the middle the middle cerebral artery, with the middle cerebral artery being the uh, the larger terminal branch. Now the posterior lateral part is formed by the posterior communicating artery, which connects the uh, internal carotid to the posterior cerebral arteries. Okay, and uh, the posterior cerebral arteries uh, complete the the circle posteriorly. Okay, so and the posterior cerebral arteries are given off as the uh, terminal branches of the basilar artery. Okay, so the basilar artery usually bifurcate to form the right and the left posterior cerebral arteries. Okay, so let me show you that. Uh, yeah, you can see the posterior cerebral artery, sorry, rather the basilar artery. The basilar artery, you can see it is bifurcated to the two posterior uh, cerebral arteries over there and over there. And the posterior cerebral arteries, you can see, uh, are, are attached to the internal carotid artery via the posterior communicating artery. This this forms the posterior lateral part. Then the anterior lateral part is formed by the this anterior, anterior cerebral artery. Then the anterior part of the sac of weedies is formed by this uh, artery, which is uh, connecting the, the left and the right uh, anterior communicating arteries. That is the anterior communicating artery, okay? Then you can see some branches. You can see some branches. So let's discuss, uh, before we move to the branches, you can see how it is related to the optic chiasma, the optic tract, uh, the, the, this, uh, the mammillary bodies, Okay, and the tuber cinerium, okay, tuber cinerium, okay, and the posterior perforated substance will be here, and this will be part, this will be anterior perforated substance will be uh, in this region, okay. So this, this, these structures are within what is known as the interpudicular fossa, that is where you find this, uh, uh, the arterial sac of viris or the polygon de viris or the circulus arteriosus, okay. So he, this is a very good cadaveric image. You can see the basilar artery here, divided into the two posterior cerebral arteries over there. Okay, then you can see internal carotid artery here and the 
Uh, so let's just use this one. You can see it here. And you can see its terminal branches here. You have the left uh, middle cerebral artery over there and the left uh, anterior uh, cerebral artery over there. And you can see the posterior communicating artery there joining the posterior cerebral artery to the internal carotid artery over there. You can see it there. And the anterior communicating artery now will be between the left anterior communicating artery and the right anterior communicating artery. We'll, we'll, um, we'll join the two, okay? So this is the, uh, you can see this is the pons over here. So the pons, these two are the mammillary bodies, okay? So uh, this here is the optic nerve. Then they, they uh, cross each other here to the optic chiasma and extend as the optic track. So these structures here are within the interpudencular fossa, okay? The interpudencular fossa. And here you can see pons, you can see the basilar groove where the, the basilar artery lies upon. And you can see at the lower border of pons, you can see the two vertebral arteries. This is the left vertebral artery being joined by the right vertebral artery to form this now basilar artery, okay? And you can see now this is the circulus arteriosa, so the polygon diabetes or the uh, circle of viris, okay? So what is the, uh, uh, what is uh, a clinical anatomy related to this? Why, why is this uh, polygon diabetes or this uh, circular satellites as important clinically? Because of uh, occurrence of what are known as berry, berry aneurysms, okay? So these are localized dilatations, okay? In one of the arteries of the circle of weedies. And this can be due to congenital muscular weakness. If you have, muscular weakness, the smooth muscles forming the, the vessels, if they become weak, the, the vessel might become dilated, leading to aneurysms. And uh, those aneurysms, rupture of those aneurysms, aneurysms uh, usually cause a life-threatening uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage. These subarachnoid hemorrhages are very, uh, very they have a very poor prognosis. And uh, if not a... Uh, 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 if not managed early, they, they, they can result to uh, uh, death. Okay? So the most common site of uh, berry aneurysms is at the junction of between the anterior, anterior cerebral artery with the anterior communicating artery. Where the two come into contact, that is the most common site, followed by the bifurcation of the internal carotid artery. Okay? So you can see here, this is the most common site. Most common site here where the uh, anterior communicating artery, anterior communicating artery is, is uh, meeting the anterior cerebral artery. 40% of the berry aneurysms occur at that point. You can also see at the point of bifurcation of the internal carotid artery to form the middle uh, cerebral artery and the anterior cerebral artery. That is the said, second most common site, okay? And also uh, others can be found in other sites, but within the circle, these two, are the most common sites, uh, most common sites. So what is the function of importance of this? Uh, why, why, why is it important that you have a circle of virus, that arterial circle of virus? It usually equalizes the pressure of blood flow on both sides of the brain, okay? And it also provides an alternative route through which blood can enter uh, the internal carotid artery or the basilar artery. So blood entering the via these two systems, the internal carotid system and the vertebrobrasilar system can be distributed to any part of the cerebral hemisphere. So if you have occlusion of one of the system, the, it can be compensated by uh, the other, okay? So it, 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 it provides like a collateral channel, okay? A co an alternative route or a collateral route. So what is the branching pattern of this uh, circle of weeds? So, the anterior, middle, and posterior cerebral arteries give origin to two types of branches. They can be either central or cortical. Now, these central branches arise in the region of the arterial circle of Willis, and these central branches are end arteries, okay? They are end arteries. They do not anastomose. The cortical branches, on the other hand, they ramify, they ramify the surface of the cerebral hemisphere. Therefore, they supply the, the cerebral cortex, and in most cases, some of them anastomose with each other, okay? Some anastomose with each other. Now, the central branches, let, let us discuss the central branches which are, uh, arise in the region of the arterial circle of Willis. So they, they usually pass deep. They pass deep into the substance of the cerebral hemisphere and uh, supply structures within it. 
So, and uh, they consist of main six main groups. We have six main groups. That is the anteromedial group, posteromedial group, and the anterolateral group. That is the anterolateral group. There are of two types: the right, the right group, and the left group. Also, the posterolateral group. We we have a right group and a left group. Okay. So those are the six main groups of the central branches. So let's discuss with the anteromedial group. So the anteromedial group usually arise from the anterior cerebral artery and from the anterior communicating artery, okay? It then passes through the medial part of the anterior perforated substance. So those arteries, uh, they supply the, the following structures, the caudate nucleus, caudate nucleus, uh, the anterior limb, and the genu of the internal capsule. So the internal capsule, uh, it's like a bundle. It's uh, internal capsule uh, consists of the projection fibers, which project from the from the uh, cerebral cortex all the way to the spinal cord. So that those projection fibers are housed in the internal capsule. Okay, so it is supplies those areas. Okay, so we have one important anteromedial an, an artery in the anteromedial group known as the recurrent artery of Hubner. This recurrent artery of Hubner uh, uh, is, is usually supply uh, these parts, okay? The caudate nucleus, the anterior limb, and the genu of the internal capsule. And uh, because it supplies those structures, if you have occlusion, occlusion of that artery due to, say, thrombosis, it, 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 it will lead to contralateral paralysis of the face and the upper extremities, okay? Because the corticobulba, corticobulba fibers are mainly located in the genu of the internal capsule, okay? And the, the, the corticospinal tract to the upper extremities, despite it being found in the posterior limb of the, of the, of the internal capsule, uh, it, is, it is relatively close to the genu, okay? So the, the fibers which, are, which project to the upper extremity, they, they are closely related to the genu of the internal capsule. So if you have a blockage of that artery, those uh, 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 um, projection fibers they in forming the corticospinal tract, uh, uh, which are motor fibers, the upper motor neurons will be, uh, uh, will be will undergo necrosis and uh, that will lead to paralysis of the of the upper extremities upper extremity contralateral because they have to decussate at the level of the pyramids of the medulla okay so that that form of uh, paralysis is known as the fasciobrachial fasciobrachial monoplegia okay so this is the anteromedial group the anteromedial group yeah you can see the anteromedial group coming immediately from the anterior communicating artery and from the anterior cerebral artery okay there they are. Then let's look at this other group, anterolateral group, okay? Anterolateral group is the next group. Um, they are also known as the striate arteries or the lenticular striate arteries. So meaning that they supply the lentiform nucleus, okay? Lentiform nucleus and the corpus striatum, okay? That is the area supplied by those arteries. And they mainly arise from the middle cerebral artery, but others come from some, few may come from the anterior cerebral artery. Uh, so they usually enter the anterior perforated substance, but through the lateral part, remember the anteromedial group also entered the anterior perforated substance, but through the medial part. Now, the, both anteromedial and anterolateral group, they supply the caudate nucleus, the internal capsule, and the lentiform nucleus. Now, we have one artery of, of the anterolateral group, which is known as the Cachot's, Cachot's artery of cerebral hemorrhage, okay? And it is usually larger than the others. So the reason it is called the, as the Cachot's artery of cerebral hemorrhage is because in uh, hypertensive patients, especially the geriatric group, the elderly group, it usually rupture. And if it ruptures, uh, 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 there'll be loss of blood supply to the internal capsule, and th that will lead to contralateral spastic hemiplegia, paralysis of the opposite side, and... Uh, also, the paralysis of the lower half of the face, the upper half of the face is spared. You, you'll be taught why. So it is the lower half of the face. There be also altered sensations, okay? Altered sensations or altered sensor, sensor, sensorium, okay? And that will be mainly due to involvement of the genu and the posterior limb of the internal capsule. So that is the catch artery of the cerebral hemorrhage, and it is part of the anterolateral group. Then that... And this was the 
uh, this was the anterolateral group over there, mainly from the middle cerebral artery, but some might come from the anterior cerebral artery. So let's look at uh, the uh, and, uh, posterior, let's discuss posterior medial group. So the posterior medial group may mainly come from the posterior communicating artery and the proximal part of the posterior cerebral artery. So this one uh, uh, enter via the posterior perforated substance in the interpudencular region. And they are also known as the thalamo perforators. They perforate the thalamus, okay? So, so they supply the for hypothesis cerebri uh, you are talking about the, the pituitary gland, the hypothalamus, the anterior and the medial group of the thalamic nuclei. Okay, so also the subthalamic region and also the tegmentum of the midbrain. Okay, so those regions are supplied by the thalamo perforators, which are the posterior medial group. Okay, then we have the posterior lateral group, uh, both the right and the left. They arise from the lateral part of the posterior cerebral artery. So as, as it winds around the, this part of the midbrain known as the cerebral pindac, uh, peduncles, it, it, it gives the, the posterior lateral group of uh, the, the central group, the central branches, okay? So those are also known as the thalamogenic arteries because they supply the thalamus, part of the thalamus and the genicular bodies, okay? So it will supply the caudal half, the, uh, the caudal half, the lower half of the thalamus uh, another structure of the diencephalon known as the palvina, uh, also the, the geniculate bodies, both the median and the lateral, and also the, uh, the, the lateral and the large ventral groups of uh, dynamic nuclei. Those ones are supplied by the thalamogeniculate arteries, which are the, uh, the posterior lateral group of the central branches of them, uh, a circle of willies. So you can see here, this is the posterior medial group there, posterior medial group there. Posterior lateral group there, anterior lateral group there, and the anterior medial group there. Then you can see this artery uh, of the anterior medial group, the recurrent artery of Hubner. So remember the recurrent artery of Hubner, we mainly supply caudate nucleus, the genu and the uh, the genu and the anterior limb of the internal capsule. So and parallel and blockage due to the thrombosis of this artery leads to uh, the facial brachial monoplegia, okay? Facial brachial monoplegia. Then I want you to remember an artery of the anterolateral group, the catchot artery of cerebral hemorrhage, okay? Which undergoes a rupture in uh, uh, hypertensive patients, especially the elder ones, the elderly ones, okay? The elderly hypertensive patients leading to contralateral spastic hemiplegia, uh, altered sensorineurium, and uh, yeah, okay? So that is that for now. For the cortical branches, that is the anterior cerebral artery, middle cerebral artery, and the posterior cerebral artery, they will be discussed in the second part of this video. So stay tuned and uh, subscribe for more content. So just remember, yes, med content might not be pregnant, but it delivers. Thank you.